So I have to ask, we've been Thanks, watching, Diane. we've all been watching the Crown story play out. Your great rival has been wounded over the past few months. What's been the thinking? Why now? And is this really, really the opportunity of a lifetime for Star? Yeah, it cracks me up to listen to you know, your dramatic description of of uh, Crown's uh, position. I am a boring financial Swiss, so I'm looking at this purely through uh, rational eyes. Um, you know, the, the idea of putting Crown, uh, Crown and Star together is an old idea. In fact, in 2011 or 12, Crown uh, took a stake in Star when we demerged from Tapcorp and then subsequently applied to the regulator to increase its stake. Um, so so the, the concept is not entirely new. Once it looked like Crown was seriously in play, we had to consider our position. And we believe that putting these two businesses together will position us exceptionally well for when the COVID crisis lifts, tourism returns, travel returns. And you know we'll have a company that, in terms of scale, will put uh, us on the global map. It's not without risk, though. Are you concerned about the regulatory overhang, given that there are still ongoing investigations in Perth and in Melbourne over the Crown businesses there? Yeah, look, uh, the, um, the Royal Commission into Crown in, in uh, Victoria will uh, report back on the 1st of August. Uh, in WA, we expect to see an interim report by June with a final report by November. So. If you look at a timeline of a likely transaction, we will have pretty good visibility of what the regulation, uh, what the changes will be, or what the re recommendations will be. I should also say that as an industry insider, we probably are the best uh, place player to understand those risks and to deal with them and action. So I think the timeline works for us and our understanding of the sector works for us. As an industry insider, of, of course there are synergies which you've talked about at length this morning, but I'm wondering, you still have to apply for that gaming licence, just as Blackstone would have to? We have to apply for probity, but, you know, we are currently operating in two of the four states, two of the four jurisdictions. The regulators understand each other, and if we pass uh, probity in both of those... And, and so we believe that for us that's not a particularly challenging hurdle. Um, you know, as an operating insider today. So we should be able to pass that quite easily, actually. Would removing James Parker from the shareholder registry make it easier for those approvals to come through? I think the, um, particularly the inquiry here in New South Wales has already established a framework for dealing with the influence that uh, James Packer's company, CPH, has in the past exerted over Crown. So I think that issue has been largely dealt with. Would you be willing to sweeten your bid? We've seen that from Blackstone this morning. I, you know I can't answer that. <laughs> Look, I had to ask. Um, talk to me, Matt. What's the idea behind the partial cash component of this proposal? It's twofold. Uh, on one hand, it allows, it allows investors who feel that they want to and take some cash off the table, take cash off the table. And the second point is, you know, there is an all-cash alternative being put forward by other bidders, by another bidder. You know, we were able to demonstrate that uh, even for the 25% of the bid that we would make cash available for, um, that we're superior on that pure cash component as well. Matt, I want to get into the nitty-gritty of, of, because, of course, there's a third, you know, not a proposal, but a third element on the table, which is that debt financing uh, proposal from Oak Tree Capital. How does this play out? Yep. Is it easier for a bid like yours to go through if the Oak Tree deal was taken first? That gives James Packer a clean exit. Is that something that you envision that that's how it's going to play out? No. I envisage that uh, the Crown investors will be delighted with our uh, initiative today and that they will <laughs> implore the Crown to engage with us in uh, exclusive due diligence.
I, I, I like your positive mindset. Let me ask you about uh, the border situation, because you've always said that tourism is, is the aspiration for the Star yep. Group, right? Has that changed, given that we're now not expecting from the government to reopen borders until next year? Some epidemiologists are saying 2023 is a more likely goal. Yeah. Uh, the, the licenses that we operate under are very long-term licenses. I think the first one in our portfolio runs off in 2093, um, the next one in 2122, and the last one is one in perpetuity. So, so you know, from our, and, and the assets that we're building are very long-term assets. So from my point of view, that opening of the borders, I'd rather wait for a month or two to make sure it's, you know, it stays open rather than keep changing changing the balance. You should also bear in mind, Heidi, that 88% of our earnings currently come from the domestic business. And the most pleasing thing that we were able to demonstrate uh, last week when we reported at the Macquarie Investor Conference was that as soon as local restrictions come off, the business bounces back to pre-COVID standard levels or beyond even. So particularly in Queensland, we're doing exceptionally well right now. So. Um, I'm pretty optimistic that the business will return back to pre-COVID levels as quickly as possible, domestically first, and then you know we'll be ready to um, welcome all of the international tourists after that. But I'll give you a chance to talk to you know the shareholders that will ultimately vote on this deal. Are you worried that you know the history between James Packer and Star might come into play there? There is a perception that Blackstone is the the cleaner break. Look, I can't really talk to that perception. As I said earlier on, I'm a I'm a business person, and I would think that our proposal is a superior proposal, and that all shareholders. We'll see the benefits of the superior uh, superior proposal.